1,000 Starship flights per year is an impressive milestone that Elon Musk targets in the future. If you think that is unable to shock you, please tighten your seatbelt as I will reveal the more shocking information. Another tycoon besides NASA, which is the U.S. military, even ordered thousands of flights, possibly up to 14,000 flights on SpaceX Starship, once this type of superpower rocket is operational. Obviously, the goal of thousands of flights will never come true with just a few launch pads like the present. In fact, there will be hundreds of Mechazilla launch towers constructed globally by 2030. How did both SpaceX and the military plan for this? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. The handshake between the U.S. military and SpaceX is getting tighter as the Pentagon does not want to settle down with the regular contracts like SpaceX's remaining customers. Especially in the context that America needs to increase its military power more than ever, and they believe that Starship will be an effective tool to help them optimize their progress. Starting with the rocket cargo program announced in 2021, they have now gone much further, planning to build hundreds of Mechazilla launch towers by 2030. The big driver for this ambitious plan is thousands of SpaceX flights per year which the military is aiming for. Those flights will be used to send supplies, and perhaps even troops in the future to anywhere in the world in less than an hour. Defense Department officials began looking at the idea two decades ago, but only recently has it come closer to reality. Another concern is about China building many more space launch facilities. The United States military has about 850 military bases around the world. Just connecting the largest military bases would need about 90 launch towers. It can be said that this Mechazilla replication project is a fatty cake for the military when the margin between the funding and the benefits obtained from it is significant. As of February 2023, SpaceX's Mechazilla launch towers are estimated to cost less than $100 million each. If the water deluge system is added, the cost will not go up much. The metal launch tower segments, including robotic arms and the power to operate them, are also not expensive. As a result, the 100 Mechazilla launch tower bases would just cost about $10 billion. $10 billion is a peanut of the abundant budget resources and the annual spending of the American military. According to statistics in November 2023, the United States is considered the highest military spending worldwide in 2022 with $877 billion U.S. dollars. Starship's operational expenditure for Starship is also low. Let's go back to school and do some basic calculations. In the case they fly each Starship twice per day for cargo delivery, a fleet of 20 Starship would be 40 flights per day or 14,000 ones per year. If the vehicle could withstand 100 flights before a major refit or replacement, every two months, they would need to replace or refit. SpaceX senior advisor Gary Henry added, SpaceX's current fleet of Falcon 9 rockets with boosters originally designed to fly 10 times, but with future boosters that might go up as many as 40 times, have brought the price of flying payloads from about $4,500 per pound to about $900 per pound. The Falcon 9s has a capacity of 44,000 pounds to 132,000 pounds. But Starship is a very different animal, he said. Starship is fundamentally meant to be rapidly reusable. We designed the vehicle from the outset to fly 100 times, not 10 times, and it's going to deliver 220,000 to 250,000 pounds, 100 to 115 metric tons, to low Earth orbit. He said Starship would bring the cost trajectory down to a starting point of $90 per pound. Musk has said he could see that dropping even more to $9 a pound down the road. Henry said these are prices close to what one gets using the Boeing C-17 Globemaster III military jet, the supply workhorse of the military, but with flights that take hours instead of minutes. The C-17 has 85 tons of payload capacity, the SpaceX Starship can have two to three times the payload capacity and would fly 15 to 30 times faster than the C-17. That means SpaceX could do 40 to 80 times what the Globemaster 3 military jet does in an hour. In a few years, we will be launching Starships hundreds and soon thereafter thousands of times a year, he said. And if just assuming you have a rapidly reusable system that could, let's say, launch twice a day, from a single launch base, you're going to find very, very quickly, we're going to run out of places to launch. 
To meet its launch plans, it will need multiple launch towers from its existing launch sites at KSC Texas and California. But SpaceX could spread its footprint to new launch sites down the line as well. And that could feed into point-to-point -point plans the military is interested in, Henry shared. Currently, SpaceX is gearing up for the construction of the second launch tower in Texas, in addition to the currently operating launch tower. From November last year until now, the delivery of new tower segments has taken place regularly. On February 19, we saw four more tower segments arrive in Texas, increasing the total number of tower segments for the new Mechazilla to more than nine. This raises many speculations about the possibility of a third tower in Starbase. Obviously, everything does not stop in Texas. The Department of Defense is looking for a new home for SpaceX's Starship, launching the process to determine what the environmental impact would be to allow the world's most powerful rocket to launch from Florida's Space Coast. Led by the United States Air Force, which includes the Space Force, but working with NASA, the FAA, and the United States Coast Guard, what is officially called an environmental impact statement, EIS has the most rigorous requirements when weighing the detriments a project might have on its surroundings. The Lunar Starship will be equipped with four landing legs. At launch, Complex 39 at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. This is the same pad where it launches Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launches, but more importantly for NASA, the only SpaceX launch pad at the time that could support human spaceflight. But the company made little progress there last year as teams focused on Starship test flights from South Texas and the sheer power of Starship in its test flights had NASA raising flags that led to SpaceX constructing a second support tower at nearby Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's Space Launch Complex 40 that could support human launches, although it has yet to complete it. And while SpaceX may one day use KSC for Starship launches, the Space Force is keen to make sure there's no delay in its ability to use the massive rocket for its own purposes. So the EIS is considering three options. The first is to transition Space Launch Complex 37 after it supports the final United Launch Alliance Delta IV heavy rocket mission expected to fly this summer. Originally constructed in the 1960 for Saturn 1 and 1B rockets, SLC-37 later underwent modifications by Boeing to accommodate Delta IV launches. To date, the launch pad is still active, operated by ULA, but the retirement of the Delta IV is imminent, with a single launch left to execute. The Department of the Air Force has scheduled three public meetings in Cocoa, Titusville, and Cape Canaveral, Florida, respectively, from March 5 to March 7. An additional virtual meeting is slated for March 12. Those meetings are the very start of the process, and the purpose is to discuss the scope of the EIS. SpaceX followed that same process back in 2021 for its private launch site down in Starbase, Texas. The whole process is anticipated to extend over 18 months. According to the outline schedule, a draft EIS will be released in December for public feedback. The final EIS, along with the selection of the preferred alternative among the three options, is expected by September 2025, followed by the formal record of the decision a month later. The second is to construct a new launch pad called Space Launch Complex 50 that would be located between SLC-40 and SLC-37 on currently undeveloped land. This option is under evaluation alongside a no-action alternative where no Starship launch sites are developed at either location, standard practice for EIS processes. Previously, environmental reviews were initiated for a proposed Starship launch complex at KSC's LC-49 in December 2021. The study is currently on hold, and SpaceX seems to not be interested anymore. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.